People ask me how you make forecasts, uh, because I don't use any econometric methods. Remember, I want to have a simple way of forecasting, since people can easily understand. And uh, so I will go to another, so let's let me get rid of this first. In my analysis and books, I've used cycles to make a variety of <coughs> forecasts. And the cycle we're going to look at is the cycle of inflation. Now, this part is a very long-term cycle starting out from the 1760s, and I haven't updated it stop at 2005, but you can see uh, what's going on right now. This cycle looks at the supply of money in the economy. And uh, actually it's looking at the supply of money growth, the growth of money. It's a growing economy, so things have to be presented in terms of growth. And this is a long time period, so we are looking at money growth per decade. What's the level of money growth every decade? So, the amazing part of the cycle is that money growth has peaked every third decade in the United States, except for one to one time period which was exceptional in U.S. history. Otherwise you find like 1770s, 1800s, 1830s, 1860s, and then later on 1910s, 1940s, 1970s. All these are decades that are 30 years apart. So the cycle shows that money growth has peaked every third decade in the United States, except for the aftermath of the 1860s. After the 1860s, there was some time period when money growth did not follow this pattern. But something drastic happened during the, during the 1860s. That was the Civil War. So the normal or natural fabric of American society was demolished, was destroyed at that time, so not surprisingly, the patterns were, that were existing in the U.S. economy until then also disappeared. But this cycle is so strong, so resilient, that once the economy and society came back to, became normal, the cycle made a comeback from 1910s, 1940s, and 1970s were the peak decade of money growth. And now, 2005 doesn't show the peak decade, but you know what's happened. Uh, in the past two years. They are printing money as if there is no tomorrow. Money growth is so high now, much higher than it has been. Uh, it's, it's, I think we're back to where we were in the 1970s as far as money growth is concerned. They're printing money like mad right now, maybe even faster. So this is an amazing cycle to me because 
the establishment of the Federal Reserve did not make any difference to the cycle. The Federal Reserve is supposed to control money supply, but there is, it's not making any difference to the cycle of money. Now, whenever money growth is high, inflation follows. So if you have a three-decade pattern of money growth, that means there must be a three-decade cycle of inflation as well. So let's look at that. All right, so this is the cycle of inflation. See, it has the same pattern. Inflation is peaking every third decade in the United States, 1770s, 1800s, 1830s, 1860s, then a disruption like the money growth cycle, then 1910s, 1940s, 1970s, and now the, year, the 2000s. Now this cycle of inflation has been very helpful to me in making a variety of economic forecasts. In fact, I discovered this cycle sometime in 1982 and made long-term forecasts, short-term and long-term forecasts at that very time. Uh, for the 80s, I said that oil price would fall sharply because oil and inflation are interconnected. Uh, money growth is one thing that affects inflation, oil is another. So I, at that time I forecast well, oil will fall sharply in the 80s, would fall sharply in the 80s, then in the 90s, and then in the coming decade, in the new millennium, oil would start to rise sharply again, following this cycle. And my reasoning was that if something has been going on for almost three centuries, then it must be something in the U.S. economy and society that creates it. I don't know. I didn't know what it, it was, but a pattern that lasted for so long could not disappear so easily, would not be able to, would not disappear so easily. It could disappear if we have another civil war, but the chances of that were zero to me. So I felt that the cycle would go on, and, and I felt that this was the cycle of capitalism. The cycle would go on un, uh, as long as monopoly capitalism lasted. So this cycle is what uh, uh, helped me forecast that the current decade would be a decade of, would be a decade similar to the 1970s. That was my forecast. The current decade would be a decade that was similar to the 1970s. So now let's see what happened in the 70s. During the 1970s, there was money growth explosion, which has been happening now as well. Then there was a jump, jump in the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. Now we have not seen a similar jump this time, but I'll come back to that point. There was also a house price, a home price explosion during the 1970s, which happened this time as well. But since the CPI did not jump so much, it was made up by the home price explosion. And I felt that CPI would not rise as fast as the CPI in the 1970s, because this time we have so much uh, foreign trade. We have so much in imports coming from China, and that would keep the keep a lid on consumer prices. Uh, so the cycles don't mean that everything has to be repeated. It just means there are some patterns from the, that we can look at from the past, and then look at what's going on in the in the present, and then uh, make our forecast accordingly. So there has not been as much of a rise in the CPI. But the home price index has made up for that shortfall. So the home price inflation, the home in housing inflation is much worse now than it was in the 1970s. And then in the 70s, there was a big jump in the price of oil. Again, in this deck, the same thing, even bigger jump. Then gold jumped in the 1970s, again, this decade. So you can see. The current decade, in many respects, resembles 
the 1970s, and 